The Bearcats facing the top ranked Buckeyes this afternoon in Columbus. And after an early Ohio State field goal, Dustin Grutza, all alone at quarterback this week, makes a play. Steps up in the pocket, finds Jared Martin in the end zone, and it's 7-3 Bearcats. Martin's first catch goes for a touchdown in Columbus. And you see, kept it close the entire first half. The Buckeyes didn't regain the lead until Troy Smith showed some strength, found Ted Ginn, number seven scored to give OSU a 13-7 lead at the break. Second half, and Ohio State slowly started to take over. Smith again to again, or we might say one more again, another touchdown. Smith threw for 203 yards and two TDs. Meanwhile, UC's offense had that good start, but then spun its wheels in the second half. The Buckeyes picked off Brutes at twice, sacked him eight times, three from Quinn Pitcock. And after all that, it's still just a two possession game with 10 minutes to go. That's when Antonio Pittman slams the door with a 48 yard touchdown run, 155 yards rushing for the junior, and it's 27 7 Buckeyes. After a UC turnover, Maurice Wells added one more touchdown for Ohio State. So the moral to the story is UC hung around for a half, but Ohio State still wins it by 30, 37 to 7. With more from Columbus now, leading off our team coverage, the voice of the Bearcats, Dan Horde. The day before the game, UC head coach Mark D'Antonio pulled a Gene Hackman from the movie Hoosiers. He brought his players here to Ohio Stadium, checked out the distance between the yard lines, looked at the height of the goal post, and the message was obvious. It's not the stadium. It's not 100,000 plus in attendance. It's 11 on 11 football. Well, for three quarters, the Bearcats were able to compete. But in the fourth, the Buckeyes pulled away to win by 30. I think we played well. You know, our defense has shown a lot of character this year. We're playing. I mean, pretty much so we could play with the top offense in the country. You know, we played really hard. Um, you know, when we go up 7-3, it builds a lot of confidence for us. Um, it just seemed like in the fourth quarter, got a little tired. But overall, I think we played really well. Uh, we really believe that we can play right with these guys coming in here. And, you know, it's a hard loss for us. Uh, you know, we we're lo really looking forward to this game and getting after Ohio State. But we just got to keep working, keep improving, and get ready. We got Virginia Tech coming up in a week. You know, they're front seven. They have a great front seven. They stop the run. They're big, they're strong, athletic, fast, quick. You know, their secondary also plays a role in that, too. They fly up to the ball, the safeties do. And, you, you know, you got to give Ohio State a lot of credit. They're a great football team. I enjoy the experience coming up here. I think it's, I think it's special to come back to a place where you know people and um, you get the chance to compete in this environment. And that's what I, we sold our players on, you know, to come here to play a number one team in the nation, to come and play in this environment, to play, as most of our guys are from Ohio, to play players from Ohio, players that you played in high school, uh, or you that you know. I mean, that's exciting for everybody. So, I mean, it's a great experience for us. And, uh, um, you know, they're a first-class football team. This was the fourth time in the last eight years Ohio State has defeated Cincinnati. Now the two teams aren't scheduled to play again until the year 2012 when Ohio State is scheduled to come to Paul Brown Stadium. For more on the Buckeyes, let's check in with Joe Daneman. Troy Smith and Ted Ginn are the faces of this Ohio State football team. Both were recently on the cover of Sports Illustrated and both are legitimate Heisman contenders. But the sometimes forgotten man on this explosive offense is running back Antonio Pittman. I feel as if, you know, they called upon me to, to uh, they called my number and I had to make something happen. In its first two games, the Buckeyes offense feasted off big plays in the passing game. But the Bearcats double teamed Ted Ginn, forcing Ohio State to grind out a ground game. Antonio is a great, a great runner, you know. We just got to keep feeding the ball, keep feeding the ball, and then he's going to make his way to do whatever he got to do, you know. And he turned out to have a big day, you know. And we just got to just keep pushing forward. Pittman finished with a season-high 155 yards rushing on a season-low 16 carries. And his 48-yard touchdown early in the fourth quarter helped OSU shake off UC. As offensive linemen, like I said, we know Troy's going to do his thing, but we take a lot of pride in... Uh, you know, when you see Pitt break for, break for a 56-yard touchdown, it's, it, it's nice. It's breathtaking. The long touchdown run had to be somewhat of a relief for Antonio Pittman. He's normally a threat to take it the distance every time he touches the ball, but his longest run of the year before this afternoon was only 14 yards. As a running back, it, it happens. You know, you, you either break one or you, you come close to breaking one. You know, and it, you feel as if you're always so close and then 
when it happens, you're like, okay, it runs over. You know, it goes by you so fast. But, I mean, it's just good to break one, you know. But the offensive line, they handle their business for me. Pittman is only the fourth player in Ohio State history to rush for more than 1,000 yards as a sophomore. Still, he doesn't get the headlines of a Troy Smith or a Ted Ginn. But like Anthony Gonzalez, he's another weapon on a loaded offense. Anytime you have a guy who is breaking tackles, running through people, you know, picking up those extra yards, that's encouraging for an offense. That's inspiring in a way. And it, uh, you know, they say enthusiasm is contagious, uh, and it certainly is. Joe Daneman, Fox 19 Sports. Thanks, guys. Pittman's 1,300 yards last season are the second most by an Ohio State sophomore. Archie Griffin holds the record with nearly 1,600 yards in 1973. All right, more football now. The Miami Redhawks needed a win today against Kent State to avoid losing its first three games for the first time since 1990. They came into this game. The Redhawks had won 15 of 16 against Kent State, but the Golden Flashes drew first blood. First quarter, Julian Edelman floats one to the end zone for Naja Pruden. He loses the defender, pulls it in for the score. Edelman passed for 249 yards and the one touchdown. He also did some damage on the ground, ran for 70 yards, including this one yard touchdown that put Kent State up 16 points. All right, late third, Brandon Murphy slices in from three yards out for the score. That's Miami's first rushing touchdown of the year. You tack on the two point conversion and the Red Hawks trailed 16 8. Then with just over a minute to go, Mike Kopel calls his own number. Takes it in from two yards out. The Red Hawks are down just 16-14. But Kokel's two-point conversion is high for Ryan BC, and that's all. That's it. Miami loses for the third time this year, 16-14, the final score. Kentucky opens SEC games tonight at home against Ole Miss, and what a night for quarterback Andre Woodson. This touchdown pass to Dick Lyons, the first of three for Woodson on the night. He and Lyons hooked up again in the second quarter. This time, Lyons makes a great catch in the end zone, and the Wildcats are up 14-7. Most of the credit for Woodson's third touchdown goes to Curtis Pulley. Pulley pulls in the short pass and then dances through the defense en en route to a 22-yard touchdown, and Kentucky's up 21-14. Tony Dixon adds a little icing on the cake with this two-yard score, and the Wildcats win their first SEC opener in 19 years. They beat Ole Miss, final score 31 to 17. Big one, huge in South Bend. Second ranked Notre Dame number 11, Michigan. It's 7 7 in the first when Mario Manningham just runs by everyone. He is wide open, 70 yards on that strike. And that was just the start of a big first half for him and the Wolverines. He pulled in three touchdowns from Chad Henney, and Michigan took a 34-14 lead to the locker room at halftime. Brady Quinn threw three touchdowns, but also tossed three interceptions, and this fumble led to another Michigan touchdown. Michigan goes on the road and makes a statement, I'll say, in South Bend. Final score 47-21, to the Wolverines knock off number two Notre Dame. The Miami Hurricanes invaded Louisville's Papa John Stadium, ranked 17th in the country, and took an early 7-3 lead. That's when Brian Brom found Mario wide open in the Miami secondary. And he took it the distance. Brom threw for 181 yards and a touchdown. But he left the game in the third quarter. Brom did when he dislocated his thumb trying to break a fall. He's out for at least a month, so Louisville is now down two Heisman candidates with Michael Bush also out for the season. But their backups can play. Hunter Cantwell and George Stripling link up for the final points of the game. And the bill trounces Miami 31 to seven is the final score. Number three Auburn played in the day's most exciting game, hosting number six LSU third quarter. Auburn down by three, but not anymore. Quarterback Brandon Cox sneaks it in from one yard out and the Tigers go up seven to three. LSU had one final chance, four seconds to go. Jamarcus Russell connects with Craig Davis at the five, but Eric Brock comes out of nowhere and takes him down at the three, and time runs out. Close, but no cigar. Auburn wins the cat fight in a low scoring game, seven to three Auburn over LSU. At the Coliseum tonight in Los Angeles, number four Southern Cal took a 14-3 lead on Nebraska at halftime right now in the third quarter, 21-3 SC over the Huskers.